have to start by asking 42 seasons and not many coaches nowadays that I can have an introduction where I mention such longevity. What is the reason for that for you from your perspective that you've been in one place for so long and have wanted to coach for so long in an era where for student athletes and coaches alike we really don't see that anymore? Well you know I've always said that the key in, in, in high school coaching is to have a good administration. You know, I played football in college, I played basketball in college, I played tennis in college, so, but football, two a days were wearing me out. So I was ready to, to ditch football and go strictly basketball. And to see our school and our culture in basketball grow like it has has been has been special. Why did you decide to become a coach in the first place? It's a career path, but it's also a lifestyle, I feel like. So what was it for you that made you say, hey, I want to take this step to the other side of sport and start leading teams? Yeah. Well, I was majoring in business at Mississippi State. My, my mom had a store in Indianola. My dad had a store in Belzona. And, and they wanted me to come back and help run one of the stores. Well, I played five sports in high school. I lacked six hours to have my major in business. And so I was in the second semester of that. And the first day we walk in to business stat two, he goes straight into the book. And I'm sitting there thinking, this is not fun. I am not enjoying myself. So I sat there about 10 minutes and I stood up and I walked out of class. I didn't tell my parents. I walked straight to my advisor and I said, look, I want to swap to PE, I want to coach. And I never looked back. What were some of those key factors to culture that were important to you to install here when you became the head coach and that you see allowing the teams to have success year after year to this day? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, now I will say it's been an adaptation over the years. You know, the teams today probably could not take me as I was in 1982-83. I mean, because, you know, it was just, I was hell-bent on one way, and, and it was my way or the highway, and it didn't matter. And so I had to make that, uh, 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 I had to change. Not that I took things and, and let things slide. I never let them slide, because if you do that, that's when you lose it. You know, it doesn't matter w what degree that they make a mistake. You've got to correct that mistake, but also when they do something good, you've got to let them know they've done something good. And if you're doing that on an equal basis and they believe in you, they're going to play hard for you. What is the role of a coach in high school student athletes' lives when it comes down to the bottom line? Yeah. To me, uh, you, you don't know till you watch them become men or, or, or women, ladies, and have their own family and how they raise their family. You know, to see success at that time means that we did something right. To me, that was the deal. One, never quit. Regardless of the score, regardless of how tired you are, never quit. And if you can carry that over into when they become adults and they have a family and they have that same characteristic, never quit, keep fighting, and you're going to see a better community and love each other. Goals are different sometimes. You know, we always said our goal to win the overall state tournament. That's our goal. But realistically, you may have a team that's not as talented or as good to do that. And so your goal is how good can we be? It just shows you hard work, caring about your teammates, and being good teammates wins a lot of stuff. What's maybe one of the biggest lessons that, that you've learned, whether it's from your own experience or from reading and talking and learning from others um, that's impacted you in your coaching career or just in life in general? Well, I, you know, I think the old saying, you sharpen your sword with losses. Uh, not everyone's perfect. No one is except for Jesus. And uh, so I, tr I try to take a loss and try to make something positive out of it. I may sulk about it for, uh, for a while, but I'll eventually come around. It helps you to see what you're made of when you take a defeat. How do you fight back? How do you respond? And that's the same way in life. What happens when, when something bad goes? How are you going to respond? And that's what I want my players and myself 
to be able to respond to. You mentioned to me, you know, how much your teams feel like family. You just told me that you also have your own family that's been expanding. Um, is it inevitable that your first grandchild is going to wind up playing basketball now? <laughs> well, you know, I, I sent out a word that I'm going to have a 6'5 point guard uh, in a few years. And because uh, he was 21 and a half inches long when he was born. So, I mean, his long legs and long arms and he's looking around very alert. You know, so it's uh, and to, and to know that my daughter helped produce another human like that is just it's beyond uh, expression for for me. I mean, it's just unbelievably good. So, sounds like he's set up to be successful in life just because of the family line, but also sounds like he's already got the things you need on a basketball court to be <laughs> be prepared, alert, ready to go. Just just throw him a little ball and you're ready to go. I always appreciate you doing this. Right. I enjoy talking on the court, off the court, basketball logistics or. Uh, life lessons. So Absolutely. thank you for taking this time to sit down with me. Well, thanks for coming to MRA.